fucking ponytail and shit. I was my little my little boy rats and all that. I was a um I was a pimp, bro. <laughs> Already, 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 man. Well, man, great. I'm, I'm glad you uh, to have you on the show, man. A lot to talk about, man. First thing first, man. Let me get your uh, um, uh, not not impression, but let me know the reason why you decided to go with Probellum. Um, the deal just sounded sweet, bro. That's all. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I did a um, I was a lot of people. Of course, a lot of people was coming at me just offering deals and stuff like that and for me that sounded like a, it just sounded like the best deal at the time you know so it's actually it's not it's not really a long deal but it sounded like a real sweet deal so you know that's kind of that's kind of what i did and for me um the main thing um you know I, I tweeted this um i said that for me when i turn pro i want to be a world champion and i want to fight all over the world and um that's what they that's kind of what they offer me you know like most of the most of the other people you know they um they sign with certain promoters and they only fight in you know like one country basically for me i want to fight all over where i want to be a world champion which i was and which i will be again a world champion and i want to fight all over the world i don't i don't just want to fight in america you know i fought in london already um you know and so i want to i do want to go back and fight london again i actually i actually have a big fan base in london that's crazy because i'm american but i have a big old fan base in london everybody tell me they want to see me back in london and fight up fight there again and um you know fight in dubai fight china fight in japan i mean i just want to fight all over the world that's that's kind of for me what a world champion means to fight all over the world so um yeah they offered me that and i was just like yeah that's cool that's how you know that sounds good and that's why i did it so, so honestly, though, like Probellum is a new promotional company, and we know the big dogs are already out there, and we know you want to be world champion again. And and Josh Taylor is with is with Top Rank. Why not make that move to Top Rank to 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 get back to where you want? Because I I know you want that fight again. Because I I see you and Josh going back and forth on mm -hmm. social media. Right, because. Josh is going up. From what I understand, Josh is going up to 147, bro. And I'm, I don't think I'm gonna get that fight anyway. You know what I'm saying? Even if I'm with him, you gotta think about the business of boxing, bro. Like even if I'm with him, they're not gonna, they're not gonna give me a Josh Taylor fight. You know, not not no time soon. You know, just thinking about the business side of boxing, I'm not gonna, I can't, I can't really like chase him because it's it's probably not gonna happen. You know, I just, and you, know, you just gotta be real about it. it. Probably won't happen and stuff like that. So, but anyways. Um, for what I understand, he probably go up to 147 anyway. He's and I'm not going to 147. I actually did a mini camp last, um, like a week ago, and I, I made 140. You know, so I know I can make the weight, and I'm gonna stay at 140 for a little while. You know, a little while longer. Do you do Do you think Pro Bellum is gonna be able to get you the fights that you that you want? Would, would they be able to pull off a Mikey Garcia fight, even though Mikey Garcia just lost to Sando Martin? And I got to get your reaction to that. But mm -hmm. but do you think Probellum is going to be able to to uh, uh, deliver these big fights for you? I hope so. That's all I can say. I hope. I just I just hope so, bro. I mean, the boxing, the business side is is so fucking shiesty. Um, but for me, I hope so. And I just, you know, I just, I, I think I did the right move. This this stage of my career, I just think I made the right move. And I just, for me, I hope so. And that they told me they could. Um, so we'll see what happens. And I, I wasn't smiling about that. I, I, I was smiling because I'm thinking about, like, the Sandor Martin. I brought up Sandor Martin. And I, and I remember you tweeting out, man, money, like, money gone or, or, or some some something to, money, yeah, something to the bag or whatever man fucked up the bag bro he give me your up. reaction to sando martin doing what he was able to do against mikey garcia i mean it was you know mikey just looked shot at the same time you know what i'm saying mikey first off you know mikey made a big crazy bag when he fought spence and you know he made all that money then he fought jesse vargas he made seven million dollars to fight jesse vargas you know what i'm saying so he took a long time off. He didn't. He don't need the fight. You know what I'm saying. So I think he just lost that. He probably just lost that hunger. Um, and he fought Sandra Martin. So, from what I understand, you know, I'm actually, you know, I'm actually uh, friends. Me and Mikey has a real close mutual friend. You know what I'm saying. And I, you know, I talk to Mikey and stuff like too. We not we don't beef or nothing like that. We cool with each other. But we have a close mutual friend. And um, you know that mutual friend. We we talk we talk 
to each other through that mutual friend. And anyway, she said that, um, you know, Mikey really wants to fight me. You know, he he, he really does want to fight me. And he planned on fighting me next at San Don Martin. He just wanted to get, you know, he wanted to do a tune up to, you know, just forget, um, you know, just get ring rust off. And it didn't go as planned, basically. You know what I'm saying? That dude, shit, that dude beat him, basically. You know what I'm saying? That dude, he was, he was, he wasn't that good. He beat him. And did he fuck it up with me? I don't know. I think, but I think if if he would have fought with me that night, I probably would have stopped Mikey. That night, I would have stopped him for sure. I would have knocked him out for sure, for sure. You know, so. But do you think the same Mikey would have came to the ring, though? Sandor Martin, Regis Pro Grade, two different names, two different levels I of. Think, I think, of no, I think, I think he would have been, I think he would have been better prepared. Okay, I'll, I think I'll, I definitely think he, if he would have fought me, I think he would have definitely been better prepared. But he fought Sandor Martin because you know he, he been out the ring for like almost two years, you know, so that's why he chose somebody like that to fight instead of somebody like me because you know I'm, I'm still you know I just I fought you know in April, which is now is becoming a long time, but you know it's it's still before him. So glad you know, to see they gave you that knockout with, with all that bullshit going on around that fight with uh, Ivan yeah, Red. Ivan, yeah. That shit had me hot, bro. You don't understand? I'm like, what? He, he going out on a stretcher? I said, man, he out here faking like a mug with yeah, yeah, that shit was crazy, bro. That whole, that whole like, experience with the trailer, it was just kind of like a joke, to be honest. You know? Really? Like, oh, yeah, bro, it really was. It was like the whole trailer thing was just, I don't know, the whole car, it just felt like it was like a joke type of fight, basically. It wow. Was like, it just so you went, because I was the only fighter, right? I was the only like real fighter on the card, basically. Everybody, it was like a vacation for everybody. Everybody walking around the Atlanta. And for me, when I'm when I fight, bro, I don't even leave my room. That week, I don't even leave my room. I'm like a prisoner, you know what I'm saying? So I'm getting mentally, I'm getting prepared. I go do my photo shoots and media when I got to go do the weigh-ins and all that stuff. You always gotta do some type of media shit. But I stay in my room. I lock myself in my room, bro, because I feel like it's a serious thing. I'm serious about my craft. And um Everybody, every time I go, like, to, like go downstairs, I just see everybody just so fucking loose and just everybody walking around, even in a dressing room, bro. Like, it was just loose. You know, they had celebrities walking all around and people was, it just felt like a, a real loose, loose show and it just didn't feel professional. That's all because, and I mean, not professional from the standpoint of the promotions, but professional from the standpoint of the fighters. It just felt like okay. it. Like people just was, they didn't care about it, you know. Even Ivan, I saw them walking around. It's him and his wife was just walking around Atlanta, just chilling. Like, I right, motherfucker, you know we fighting, right? You like, you can walk around all you want and play, but bitch, we still gotta fight. So, 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 if the business was right and your promotion thing was up, you would do business with Triller again. Um, let's just say next question. Uh, okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. Uh, uh, going back to the Mikey Garcia fight. We, we we all know Mikey, even with the loss, he's still a name in the sport of boxing. He still has a big fan base. Would you consider fighting Mikey Garcia, even though he lost to Samuel Martin? Would, would, is, is that a fight that still interests you? I think it could be, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still interested in fighting. I'm for sure. Would the fans do it? I think so. maybe so. I saw Dan Rayfield. He wrote a thing. He was like, yeah, Mikey Garcia lost. So what? Let's, let's let him and Regis fight. Cause nobody want to fight me, bro. That's why I'm I'm fucking sitting, you know. I'm sitting since fucking since April. Like I train my ass off every day, bro. I train. I don't got no fight. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I get bored when I'm in Texas. I just train, and you know that's what I do and shit like that. Bring my family and train. But that's why I get bored and shit. I just go on vacations. I go out the country and shit like that because it's like nobody wants to fight me. So. Yeah, I mean, what do you mean? Nobody wants to fight you. Have you heard like people? From what I understand, nobody, nobody wants to get in the ring with me, bro. It's like nobody wants to get in the ring. I don't know if it's the business side, if it's the people. I don't know, bro. It's just like nobody wants to fight me. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta, you gotta realize I'm fucking. I know what I am. I'm very high risk, low reward, basically. You know what I'm saying? For like the big names, you know. That's why I fucking. I um commended Mikey because Mikey wanted to fucking you know Mikey said he wanted to fight me. Mikey's a big name and he wanted to fight me. So, um, cause I'm a dangerous. Everybody know I'm a fucking killer in the ring, bro. Everybody know that. Like I'm a killer. You know what I'm saying? Like so, I'm a person that could potentially ruin you. You know, like if people know that, like it's not no matter who I fight, they know it's not gonna be an easy fight. No matter if I fight at 40, 47, they know. Like everybody know. Like I'm a fucking killer. So. And I'm a, I'm a low reward, so that's why people fucking, you know, people are not anxious to fucking fight me. So, you know, we'll see. 
So what's the plan with with Probellum then? Like when when can we expect well, your that's first what, fight? That's, that's uh, for me. They were telling me maybe in December will be okay. a first fight, and now in the state I got, I got abroad, December, abroad, yeah, abroad, December abroad. So you know that's kind of you know I'm kind of waiting on it. I'm hopefully I hear from hopefully I hear from my manager this week, and you know, we'll see if we can do something in December or um whatever January, February, whatever. But for me, I'm just I'm gonna just keep training, bro. I just I look at it to where uh, all I'm gonna do is keep getting better. That's it. Like I'm gonna keep getting better. My body is preserved. Yes, I'm getting older, but at the same time, my body is preserved. I haven't had no hard fights. I have fucking 27 fights. One hard one with the Josh Taylor fight that was like a hard fight. But all the rest of the fights, I they, my body is super preserved. You know, I feel I feel fucking really good about you know my career. So, um, and I always people always ask me like, well, how long do you got? I mean, I think I don't know. I feel like I'm just starting. That's the crazy part. Like I feel like I'm. Like I'm just turning pro or some shit like that. Like I got 10, 15 years, of course, maybe not that long, but maybe it is. You never know. I mean, fucking Bernard Hopkins fought these damn near fifty. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I really can't say. But um, I just feel good. So we'll see. Does Regis need to move up to one forty seven in order to get some big fights? Sometimes I think that. You know, sometimes I I do think that maybe I do need to go. Maybe, you know, I don't know. But I, for me, in my mind, bro, I'm not gonna lie. I just feel like I can rule at 140. I can just take over 140 and just rule, rule the division for years and years. I just want to be a world champion. And first off, I wanna. It's like something personal with me. Everybody asks, you know, why you're not going to 147? Is this something personal? I feel like I'm. I feel like I was cheated out of being a world champion. I feel like I should still be a world champion right now, you know. And I, st I want to be. A, I've yearned to be a world champion again at 140. So. Do you um, ever do you ever regret accepting that fight with Josh Taylor abroad and not having a a a, a neutral location? Yeah, and no, you know it was the experience. At the same time, it was the experience of you know going over there and experiencing the fans. Because now I do, I have a fan base in London, bro. Like, which is crazy. I live in fucking. I'm from New Orleans, and I went to London. And when I was walking on the streets, bro, people know me. They're like, "Hi, champ. What's up, champ? What you doing over here, champ?" All that type of shit. So it's like, yeah, and no. I, I do regret some of the things. You can't, you can't regret nothing in your life. But yeah, if I could take some things back, it's just like you know, I probably, you know, um, probably wouldn't have went over there and fought him. Maybe it'll be somebody, someone else. But hey, you know, for me, it is what it is. It happened, and you know, you just, you know, you can't cry over spilled milk. It already happened, stuff like that. But if I wouldn't have went over there, I wouldn't have the fan base like I have now. Like I have a big fan base in London right now. So in in England, period. And people love you over there. So um, it's like, yeah, and no at the same time. Speaking of the 140-pound uh, division, were you able to see what uh, Jose Zapata did to uh, Jose Vargas last night? I saw that, bro. I saw, I saw the highlight. I didn't watch it live, but I did see the highlight. That was fucking nice. It was nasty. It was nice. nasty. It was I, I felt like it was going to happen. Though. I mean, I didn't feel like it was going to happen that early, but I did feel like he was going to stop him. But that early was like, that's impressive. The would a fight with Jose Zapata interest you? It could, it, it potentially could, you know, but it's a conflict of interest because my trainer is his trainer, Julian Chua. We train. That's that's one of my trainers. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and he trains him now again. At first, Julian started off training him, and then Zapata kind of straight away he did his own thing, and now he went back with Julian. You know, so. It's like, yeah, I'll definitely fight him, but it's like, damn, bro, like you know, I don't want Julian to be in that little, you know what I'm saying? It'll be, it'll be hard because you know that is Julian's a very fucking good trainer. He's my trainer in LA, you know what I'm saying? So everybody know when I start camp, I go to LA, and then you know he'll come here and stuff, and then we'll work and all that in training camp. Um, but he trains a painter, so it. I mean, of course, I'll fight him, but it's it's kind of a conflict of interest, but. I mean, at the end of the day, if I have to, then then it is what it is. Then I have to, but you know. Have you and uh, Zapata ever been in the gym at the same time ever spar? Never, uh -uh, never, never, uh -uh, never been in the gym with him before. Mm -hmm. I probably will be. I mean, shit. When I go back to LA, I might. Matter of fact, I might go back to LA this this weekend. So, um, I mean, I probably won't see him because he just fought. But you know, I'll, I'll see Julian and you know, see what to say about it. Well, my guy, we got all that sweet shit out the way. Uh.
Javante Davis, you and him, man, y'all got a long history of going back and forth on social media. I seen you uh, respond to a tweet that was put out by Chris Maddox for, for everybody who's listening and who's not watching. We, we just said this on Twitter. I'll fight his little ass on short notice. Floyd and Leonard both said they love that fight, but we all know that's bullshit. Tank ain't fighting no elite fighters anytime soon, even on short notice. Let's see who they going to find for him with the big ass eyes looking. Why, why, why don't you think Floyd and Leonard? Why they say they love the fight, but why do you think that's bullshit, though? Listen, brother, you gotta understand the business side of boxing now. You know what I'm saying? This is where the business comes from. I'm a dangerous fighter. I can potentially beat beat Tank, right? I can potentially fuck him up, right? They they did take a risk with Barrios. Good job. They took a risk with him and they beat Barrios, right? That was a, that was a real good fight. But Barrios isn't elite at 140. Everybody knows that he's. He, he was a big, you know, he was a, he had a belt. He was a belt holder for the WBA regular belt, but he's not elite, right? I'm an elite 140-pound fighter. I'm big, I'm strong, I'm fast. I can take a fucking punch. I can box, I can bang, I can do all that stuff. Tank is good, very, very skilled, very good. But I'm I'm an elite fighter at 140, so I'm elite and I'm bigger, right? Um, I just think, like, you got so... Anyways, bringing all that to the table, I just think he's not gonna fight because I'm too, I'm, I'm just too, I'm too elite for him. You know, I can potentially ruin Tank. I can potentially beat Tank. You know, say so, and and they, I know the business side, they gonna look at it like that, right? So if you look at in Mayweather promotions, he's the, if I'm not mistaken, he's the biggest thing at Mayweather promotions, right? If I'm not mistaken, who's bigger than Tank at Mayweather promotions? It's Tank. It's Javante Davis, right? Why would Mayweather promotions want to risk their their star, their superstar? They're not gonna risk that, bro. They they just not. They're not gonna risk. It's a good fight, though. I thought. It I is thought, a, I, it I thought is promoters a, cared about the fans. No, cared about putting on the fight no. the fans. Hell no, promoters don't give a fuck about that. Promoters care about their long term money, bro. You should know that. Promoters care about they. I know you bullshit. Yeah, promoters care about their long term money, bro. That's what they like. They just like their long term money, right? Why would they fight? All right, say, all right. Me and me and just say this, me and Javante Davis, we fight December 5th, right? All right, we fight December 5th. I beat Javante Davis, right? Now we can make we can we I know the paper. Oh, 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 oh. Real quick, yeah. could could you be ready for December 5th? I could five weeks. I five could. weeks. I could be ready. I just told you I train all the time, right? I'm always training. So I'm not I'm not out of shape. Not right. So five weeks now, you get in four weeks. That'll be cutting, right? That'll be cutting the show, but I probably. But you know, but you know that last week is is going to be nothing but media. It ain't going to be no training like that. It's going to be nothing but media. Right. Well, I can cut so, I can cut the media off if I need to. You okay. If I really want to be serious about the fight, I can cut the media off, right? So, but yeah, five weeks. That I mean, five weeks is good. But the thing is, like I said, I've been training, bro. Like I really been training. I did a people don't know. I did a mini camp. I'm gonna put the video out when this, you know, when they finish editing and shit like that. But I did a mini camp, bro, to get the 140. I was 140 last Thursday. Mm. So yes, I was 140 last Thursday, bro. So a week ago I was at 140 pounds. So I know I, I had nutritionist and that's what I did. I took steps and I did that. So anyways, um, I think I can do it. Now four weeks might be cutting it short. It's like, uh, yeah, it might be cutting it short. Right. But five weeks, if they could tell me right now, yes. Four weeks cutting it short a little, cutting it too close, and they might end up doing that. You know what I'm saying? They might say in three weeks, "Oh yeah, you want the fight? I will give you this." Uh, you know, they might do that, and then if it's three weeks, I'll be like, "Nah, fuck y'all, I ain't doing it," because it's it's damn it. Then that's when it's like too short, because then one week is just fucking cutting weight, basically. So, um, but yeah, right now I can take it. Um, anyway, so if you if you look at, like I said, Floyd is, I mean. Javante Davis is the, the biggest thing at Mayweather promotion. Now, me and him, yeah, if we fight, we can make a shitload of money together. It'll be a big fight. A lot of people, it'll be pay-per-view, talk a lot of shit. We do all, do all that, right? Make It can make a lot of money. But Javante Davis, that's the if. And then if I beat him, when I beat him, that'll be it, right? His That, that money train will be gone, at least for a little while. It'll be gone. So why fight me when he can go fight somebody else? He can go fight another fucking, you know what I'm saying, another fucking bum. And you can't call nobody bums, but just not, he can go fight another non-elite fighter and make the same amount of money, right? Because he he's the star. We, I mean, I can't admit that. Javante Davis is the, you know, he's the attraction. He's the star, right? So he's, why would they risk that? They're not going to risk 
you know, getting him beat. They just, you know what I'm saying? They just not going to do it. They're not going to risk getting the beat and stuff like that. And that's the business side of boxing. That's just how things are until it's so big, you know, until they have to make the fight, you know, and then they, they wouldn't care who's the winner or loser because the promoter's going to win no matter what, right? That's the that's the business side of boxing. So that's why, yeah, most likely he, he, he won't fight him. Now, I need your reaction to what Javante had to say because he, he, he did delete this tweet. He says, you are looking for a payday. I heard Shakur killed you in sparring. Don't do that. I will gladly retire you, bitch, and said the B word, all that shit. Right. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to him saying that first, he, him him saying that he's going to, he would retire you? I just think he all, I mean, it's all talk, bro. It's, it's all talk. I just think it's cool. Like, you sport a clap back. You say, oh, they sport a clap back and shit like that. Why you retire? Why you, why you take down the tweet? Probably Lena Ellaby told him, look, call them. Take that shit down, bro, because they go the people really gonna want that fight, and then you really gonna have to back that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He probably Leonard probably told him that because you know, if you saw my tweet, I tweeted something, and then my people told me, man, take that shit down. So I took it down. You gotta be a man, like, yeah, that was dumb. I took it down, right? So Leonard Ellaby probably called, he took it down. Leonard probably called him, hey, take that down, take that tweet down, because then you're gonna force our hand. You might gonna you talking that shit, you're gonna have to fight Regis. We don't got an opponent right now. And people gonna want Regis, so take that shit down, right? And that's probably what happened. So, um, but yeah, that's I mean, it's just you know, it's just talk. It is what it is. Now I ain't gonna ask you about your tweet because it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You took it down, and you, to me, that was that was the right thing. But as a professional athlete, how do you keep yourself out of those situations to where the allegations that 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 are going on with Roley? don't don't happen how does a professional athlete prevent that just don't be around the, the wrong crowd you know what i'm saying have have good friends around you that and and don't be around raggedy bitches at, at the day you know what i'm saying you can't be around the raggedy hoes and shit like that and i'm not i don't want i'm not saying that I, i'm not saying that the girls and shit that you know here around and stuff like that but you gotta know who you're around at the same time bro you're a professional athlete you're you're big you know so um, you can, you can, hold on. First off, Kobe Bryant went through the same shit. Remember Kobe, the fucking great Kobe, RIP to Kobe. He went through the same shit. You know what I'm saying? So like, and, and nobody think Kobe did that shit. Nobody, you know, I mean, certain people, people think they do it. Some people, they don't. With Rowley, I don't know. I don't know Rowley or nothing like that. Um, but yeah, just, just, just try to be around good people, good friends. Um, and, and I mean, I don't, but if he did it, then he did it. You know what I'm saying? So it's allegations, allegations, and allegations. But if he did it, then fuck. It don't matter who you are. If you did the shit, you deserve a punishment, right? But, you know, you can say um, some people, and maybe they didn't do it, or maybe they was in a different type of situation. And, you know, and then things kind of got out of hand and shit like that. I mean, bro, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. So I just, for me, uh, first off, I'm married. And I just don't be around that type of shit. I don't need to be around that type of shit because I'm married. You know what I'm saying? Then I got good friends and I'm older. So I can see different things. I can I can feel different people's vibes and how they could be and all that. And, you know, just kind of read them and stuff like that, you know. But if you got, if you got, if you're around the wrong people, you, you, shit, they can, they can fuck over you. And it just, you know, it is what it is. Got a two part question about Shakur Stevenson. Did you see his fight against uh, Jamel Harrison? Of course, yeah, of course, of course. Give me you your know, reaction to his. Uh... I, I knew it was gonna happen. Shakur, I spoiled Shakur. Shakur special. Shakur's a fucking. He's a spec. Listen, I tweeted. I spoiled Shakur. He's special. The only person, the only other person I've been there as a southpaw that was that good was Ricardo Williams. Just okay. that that skilled and that slick and that much skill was Ricardo Williams. That's it. You know, like I'm not gonna lie. Like he's fucking Shakur is special, and I knew that was gonna happen. Did you see the back and forth between Shakur and Chris Colbert? I didn't see it. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. They they was on the boxing boys. Shakur Stevenson was like, man, we we sparred back in the amateurs, and he see me at a hotel, and we sparred right there in the hotel room. And Shakur said he fucked him up, and the interview kept going on. So B Hop came on, and B Hop got fed up with all the and start and started to say Shakur was acting like a bitch. Shakur right. said, man, don't say the bitch word like three times. Like, hey, man, don't say that. Don't say that. Then it just turned left. Shakur said, I said, suck my.
Damn, yeah. If that fight with Shakur and, and Chris Colbert happened, who do you think would come out on top? I got Shakur, bro. Oh, I told uh -huh. you, Shakur, bro. Like, he's just so talented. I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, he, he's so fucking talented. Another person, it's three people I spoke with like that. And they the same weight. Oceanique Foster. Oshaki Foster. Oh, oh, Oshaki, yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. this motherfucker is so good. Like, bro, Nobody he's supposed to score, too. He's supposed Nobody to Nobody will give him a chance. Nobody going to give him a chance. They Nobody not going to give Like, if he got the same shit I got going, he got it worse than me because I was actually a world champion already. You know what I'm saying? So I got a name. I was a fucking, you know, people can't say I'm a bum and all that shit because I was a fuck. I was number. I was the super child. I was number one in the fucking world at my division. I was the champion. I was a real champion. Oh, 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 Shocky don't got that. You know what I'm saying? So, but nobody, bro, he's so fucking talented, bro. Like, I'm talking about, he is a 30 pounder and he's so fucking talented. Like, yeah, I mean, he'll give me trouble and shit like that too in sparring. You know what I'm saying? So, him, Shakur, and like Ricardo Williams, bro, they, that's like some of the most talented people I've ever been in the fucking ring with sparring. How how do you rate Javante Davis? Do you do you think that he 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 is a, a elite fighter? I think he is elite at probably like thirty five. I think he is elite skill wise. He does. He is elite. Um, I ain't talking about thirty five. Huh? I ain't talking about thirty five. I'm talking about one forty. How do you rate him at one forty? I don't think he elite at forty. Nah, I mean, I don't think he can be none of the, none of the elite fighters at forty. I mean, all right, me. Um. Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez. You got me. You got Jose Ramirez. You got Josh Taylor. I think I just think we all too big for him. I just think we all, all of us are just too big for him and too strong. No, that's fine. You don't need to play with this. Yeah, I think we just, I think all of us too big and too strong and skill wise. You know, it's just, I think it's, it's just too. You know, I think it's, it'll be too much for him. You know, even somebody like Zapata, bro. Like, you know, he can box and he got power. Because Javante, you know, he could box too, but fuck, lately he just been walking shit down. He's been getting hit with a lot of stuff, and you can't get hit like that, at, you know, at 140 by big punches. Not Barrios, yeah. you know, he took some of them things, but by big punches, then you, yeah, you can't get hit like that, bro. So um, I wouldn't say he lead at 140, but at 35, he definitely lead. <coughs> oh, absolutely. We got a fight coming up with uh, with a, a, a man that you was rumored, you know what I'm saying, to possibly, you know what I'm saying, face one once upon a time, uh, Terrence Crawford and Sean Porter. How do you see that fight going? I got Crawford, boy, in a hard fight. A hard fight? Hard fight. Okay. Bro, I got Crawford in a hard fight, bro. I, Sean, Sean going to bring it. Sean Porter is going to fucking bring it. Everybody knows that he's going to come. I mean, he gave Arrow troubles, you know what I'm saying? And he could have, he actually could have beat Arrow if it wasn't for the knockdown. Everybody know that. Like, it was a fucking hard fight with him and Arrow. Sean is going to bring it. But Crawford is not like an Arrow. Crawford is. He's going to move. He's going to pop shot you. Um... I just I, I see Crawford winning, but I think Crawford wins in the hall fight. It might be it might get ugly in there, but I think it's gonna be a hard fight for him. How 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 tough is it like for you knowing that you already been one champion? I mean champion at one forty, like like it, it's not enticing to you just to throw your name at the one forty. Regis versus Keith Thurman. Regis versus versus Sean Porter. Regis versus Earl. Regis versus versus Terrence Crawford. Like none of those like. Matchups make you want to say, man, I'm tired of all this bullshit at 140. Let me go to 147, man, see what they talk about. And you know it's a it's a bigger check too at 147. True, true, true. It does. I'm not gonna lie, it does sound enticing. And I'm gonna make that move <laughs> just like I say, once I'm a champion again at 140. You know what I'm saying? I keep telling everybody that once I'm a champion again at 140, then I can contemplate, you know, moving up to 147. But like you said, all right, look, just like you said that, right? The all those names at 147. Eventually, those names might be going up to 154, right? True. But what about these 35 pounders? Big, big name 35 pounders, right? Tiafimo might be coming. You know what I'm saying? You got um Ryan Gold, yeah, you got yeah. Devin Haney, yeah. you got um Javante Davis. What about all them coming to 140? Now, are those names bigger than the four you name up there? Potentially, it could be, right? It maybe could. so, maybe not. I don't know. But for me. I'm gonna let it play out how I want to play out. I want to be a champion again at 140. Now, you know when I get the belt, that that all depends. Now, when I get the belt, maybe, um, maybe they're coming up at the time, and maybe we can make some big old fights, you know, at 140. Or maybe then I go up to 147. You know what I'm saying? And then go after Josh Taylor, basically. You know, go back to after Josh Taylor again. So, I don't, I don't know, bro. I'm just like I said, my thing, my personal thing. I want to be a champion again at 140. It's just something I just. 
you know, just something I, I just want to do. It's just something that's in me. You know, everybody asks. That's why, like I said, I did a mini camp um, two weeks ago. I did a mini camp, and I made sure I can make 140 because I do want to campaign at 140. Before I go up to 147, I want to campaign. I want to get another belt before I go up to 147. Once I get another belt, then we do an interview and see how I feel. What you think about Jerron Ennis uh, last night? First round knockout he of Tommy Young. He a beast. Yeah, he a, he a beast, bro. He, he fucking talented like a motherfucker, I think. I mean, he can he can give most of them a run for their money. You know, most of the other dudes run for their money. But you just don't know because, um, you know, competition. Now, he, he been there with some all right people and stuff like that. But, you know, you start getting to Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, Errol Spence, Crawford. That's a different level. That's a whole different level. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole different level of perks of people. So, you know, you still got to see him in with some, you know, you got to still see him in with some um, some better competition and shit like that and, you know, and see how it happens. Canelo Alvarez, Keller Plant. How you see that fight going? Break it down for him. Canelo, the biggest name in the sport. Canelo is, the yeah, the biggest name in boxing. And I don't see nobody beating Canelo no time soon. Have you ever had a press conference play out? The way Canelo plant played out, like with the shoving and the swinging at each other. Never, never, never. Me and Josh Taylor said some shit to each other. We never fucking, you know, touched each other and shit like that. But now, uh uh. Never like when nobody hit each other and shit. Can you imagine your yourself in that position? Like like how how would you like handle like could you sit down and then do the press conference at after all that? Like you guys just shoving each other now, uh -huh. and you gotta sit down and talk about it. I don't think so, bro. I think I don't, I don't think so. I'll be like a fucking Zab Jr., like crazy. You know what I'm saying? Zab was a motherfucker. Don't play with him. You know what I'm saying? He'll hit you and then it's never over. You know what I'm saying? It's not over. Riddick Bowe and shit. Like, they was like real crazy. Like, Tyson, they, you know what I'm saying? You can't do that to them at the press conference. They, they gonna fuck you up for real. They, they thinking about it all the time. Nah, stop. Same thing like James Tony, bro. So, now nah, I don't think so. I mean, even even with me, bro, I'm not gonna lie. Like, so when I went to London, um, we did the press conference and Josh Taylor touched my belt on my shoulder. He threw me off and I was pissed off about it. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I was so fucking mad. And at the time he just threw me off and I kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like he did it and I just kind of like froze and shit. And then like, you know, then we did, it was just like, it was quick in the media and stuff, but it, it kind of pissed me off. You know what I'm saying? I want to fucking do something to him at the time, but it was, we was in front of too many, we was in front of a lot of, just everybody was in between us and shit. Eddie was there and all that type of shit. So, like, he just, you know, he touched my belt, but he did it, like, in a friendly way. He was laughing. He's like, yeah, this could be my belts. And, you know, laughing about it and shit. And it just caught me caught me up by surprise and shit like that. But when he did that, I was pissed. And he just played. He was just playing around, touching my belts and shit. And I, I knew previously, I knew Josh Taylor. Like, we played around and stuff like that before. So, I didn't know how to take it. You know what I'm saying? I really didn't. I didn't really know how to take it and shit like that. But I was kind of pissed off. So, that was, I remember that was Thursday. And then Friday for the weigh-ins. You, I don't know if you saw the video. Me and him was going back and forth at each other for the weigh-ins and shit like that. And I never do that type of shit, bro. Like for me, like once it's once it's fight time, it's professional. Yeah, you can talk, you can say all that. I might say a few things, but me and him was really going back and forth at each other. And you know, fight night, I just wanted to fucking kill him. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. I wasn't really thinking about like boxing him. Boxing and him. I just wanted to beat this motherfucker. I just wanted to fuck him up. That's it. You know what I'm saying? I, so you know, he definitely, basically, he got in my head. So. You know, if I think if somebody do that, if somebody do it at the press conference, I don't know. I might get, we might can do a brawl or something like that. But fight night, I know now, fight night, I'll be professional and I'll be, you know, my head will be clear. You know, we can do all that bullshit, but fight night come, I'm gonna be professional. I, I'll, I'll pull it back together and it'll just be the brawl at the way in and, and that it. That's it. Do you think y'all will ever see each other again inside the ring? Me and Josh Taylor. Me and Josh Taylor. I'm hopeful, but I don't think so. You don't think, yeah, I don't, I got the, the way he moved on, I, I don't think he want to fight you again. I, I, I don't think so. I talked to one of my partners, and he was like, bro, think about it, bro. Like, um, you know, I was, he was like, bro, they not going to let you fight him again, bro. That's it. They, that, that's it. You know, this fight was too close. You fucked him up. You know, he fucked you up, and he fucked him up. He got the win. That was it. He going to say, I'm past that. You know what I'm saying? Well, I would say the same. If, if I was Josh Taylor, I'm past him. I beat him already. I'm past him. Fuck him. I beat him. I'm, I'm done. I'm past that. Even if the fight was close to shit, I won. I got the decision. I beat him. I'm past that shit again. I'm past that shit. So, fuck it. Like, on to the next, right? So, um, I, I mean, I'm hopeful. I don't know if you know. I'm, um, you know, I'm signed with MTK also. So, you know, we both. Are you, get, are you, with, are you with MTK? I'm with MTK, yes. Oh, wow. So, yeah, people don't, a lot of people don't know that, but I told that's, you. So, yeah, I'm with, I'm with MTK. So, hopeful that 
you know, we on this, we on the same team, we on the same side. So hopeful that you know we, me and him, can make a huge fight sometime in the future. Maybe, like I said, someone neutral in Dubai or some shit like that. Maybe you know, we'll see. Like I said, we'll see what happens. All right, really. Well, Regis, man, I don't want to keep you too long, man. That that's pretty much uh, uh all that I, that I have for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, big ups to you, man. Blessings to uh, to you and your family. Enjoy that nice Texas weather down there. I see you outside with your shirt out, so it gotta be feeling good outside. Yeah, bro. I just had a fucking party last night, bro. Yeah, I, I just woke back up, bro. I, I woke up just to do this interview with you, bro. I, um, I was fucking. We had a big ass house party last night. I got a haunted house. We had all kinds of shit going on, bro. Really so, dope, man. That's dope. It was, it was dope. nice, bro. I made my whole gym out of fucking haunted house. It's fire. So are you are you turning the gym to a haunted house? I turned my gym to haunted house. Yeah, bro. I, turned, Damn. Oh, I wish I can go in there. And I know you got some home. footage coming out, right? On the uh, nah, I don't know haunted house, bro. Nah, nah, I don't know. Haunted Ain't house. no rigor rule life footage coming out, bro. I don't know haunted house. My camera oh, is no. fucking gone, bro. I, you know, I need I need to do that. I'm a, I might just do that today because I got. I'm gonna take the haunted house down probably tomorrow or something. I got some old kids coming over tonight to going to haunted house. So yeah, I gotta, yeah, I gotta do that. It's just hard. To, it's hard to film the haunted house because it's fucking dark and misty. And oh, okay. open and shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I try to do it. I try to get it done. All right, man. Well, big dog, man. Thank you for your time. Uh, blessings uh, uh, to you and yours. And uh, whenever you got fight news, you know what I'm saying? Fight date, or if you and Tank, you know what I'm saying? Sign on, on, on the dotted line. Right. Let me know, big dog. Let me know. All right, that's a bet, bro. Blessings, man. All right, all right. Shout out to my guy, Regis Progray, man. Always good talking to the Rougarou, man. Smash that thumbs up button, baby. We just had Regis Progray on, y'all. Yeah, the Rougarou. The yeah, the Rougarou, baby. Oh, man. Great shit, man. Great shit. Damn. Boy, he don't like Triller. I tell you that. I tell you that. He he does not like Triller. He does not like Triller at all. I said, man, you going to do some more business with Triller? No. Nah, nah, next, next, next question. <laughs> next question, man. Oh. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna take phone calls right now. If anybody want to call in and give me a reaction to the Regis Prograde interview, if not, we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on and talk about Jerron Ennis, what he did last night. We're gonna touch.